In this video, I will show you how you can build a 18 foot by 32 foot A-frame building. And even though they're not that difficult to build, they are going to be difficult to install some parts of the roof and the roofing materials on. And the fact that I don't think these are going to be the most energy efficient buildings. However, if you live in an area where it snows, I don't think the snow is going to be sticking to the roof. However, you could end up with a big pile down here at the bottom. In living in California, these are homes I saw a lot of in the mountains years ago, but don't really see them being built as much today. So we're going to start out by installing some building foundation piers, and they're basically going to be centered in our spans. And I will be creating a playlist for this video, especially if there is a lot of interest as to how much detail I will put into the other videos. And as far as the layout for something like this, we're just simply centering a few rows of foundation piers for our beams. And in this video, I am going to be using 4x8s. However, you will need to check with local engineers to validate lumber sizes for your project and you can see here where this row of piers is in the middle of our 16 foot beams and i've designed this a-frame in a way to where you won't have a lot of lumber waste which also means you're going to save a few dollars and less time cutting materials and the floor joists will also be 2 by 8 16 inches on center. They're going to lap in the middle. And we're going to butt the two at the ends together over the beam. And if you notice here, we will be adding a couple of sheathing support joist blocks so that the brakes of the plywood will have support. Let's go ahead and install the rest of our blocking. And we'll zoom in on the corner here where we do have one of the support blocks. And this will make a little more sense once you see how the sheathing is laid out. And again, this floor does not look that difficult to build. I'm not about to suggest it won't be difficult for someone else to build. And of course, it's going to be a little more difficult once we start adding interior walls and plumbing. And the block over here was so that we could install a small strip. And I don't think the engineer is going to have a problem with that based off of the way the floor framing is designed. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the floor sheathing to give you an idea why we need the blocks right here. And again, the building is designed so that the floor sheathing won't end up with a lot of waste. Next up, let's go ahead and add our base framing plates. And you can always make these 2x6 if you want a little wider seat cut for your roof rafters. We're going to be using two 16-foot 2x4s for each side of the building. And then our rafters are going to be spaced 24 inches on center. And we will be using more than one board to create our ridge because we wouldn't be able to find lumber long enough. Keep that in mind when you're designing a project like this. And this part of the ridge is a little longer because it's going to be supporting the overhang and the fascia board. So let's go ahead and install a few other components here like the walls and our outlookers along with our rafter ties and all of the blocking. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in on the outlookers here. I went ahead and installed some 3x4s instead of 2x4s because I made the overhang a little longer. And the reason why I made the overhang a little longer was to eliminate some of the waste in the roof sheathing. You could always make it smaller. And of course, a view of the bottom of our shaped rafters. And I went ahead and shaped the rafter like this just to provide you with another method you might choose instead of trying to shape the top of the fascia board. And again, I'll be going over more of that in future videos. And you might need to use multiple layers of blocking at the bottom also. And I designed this this way so that I could nail the blocks together. If I stack them on top of each other, I might need to install some type of strapping. 
and I went ahead and shaped the top edge of the block. However, you might not need to do that either. I think you're still going to be able to get some good nailing from the roof sheathing into the blocking, even if the edge of the block was square. Let's go ahead and take a look at a view from the inside. And for those of you wondering how you're going to be able to make these cuts here, well, you could probably use a compound miter saw or even a miter saw or even a skill saw. You'd be able to make these cuts with a two by four and a seven and a quarter inch blade, but you might not be able to do it the same way with a wider piece of lumber like a two by six. And our front and back walls are built identical. And the reason for that would be to speed up the assembly process. This will allow you to cut all of the pieces for both walls at the same time. We are also going to be bolting our rafter ties to the rafters to get a nice solid connection. And I went ahead and installed the blocks this way just to provide you with another possible option. Now the reason why I did this was so that I could create a nice solid tie all the way across after I install the roof sheathing and then put a few nails into these blocks. I'm going to have a nice connection all the way from one side of the building to the other. And you could always install a full length strap or strap around the corners also. And another thing you should keep in mind is that long 2x4s like this could create weaker walls, so you might want to use 2x6 here. Again, I'll go over more of that in future videos if you're interested in it. Next up is the fascia board. And of course, you can see why we shaped the bottom of the rafters. And I would imagine you would have to paint something like this before you install the roof sheathing or redesign the bottom of the building so that you could paint it in the future. And of course, the last step in the video will be the roof sheathing. And again, you could see where we have four foot pieces over here, eight footers going all the way across. And if I wanted to shorten the length of the overhang, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I would just have a little bit more waste in plywood. And if you want more information about this, feel free to leave your questions in the comment area. And if there are enough people interested in this video, I'll be glad to design a few different types of A-frames along with more details about them.